Hello everyone, my name is Jason Bergson. In this video, we're going to talk about visual transformations in R2. So we've already talked about transformations, but now we want to work on specific ones that we can actually see their representation in R2. So first, recall that if T is a linear transformation, that we can express it in terms of matrix multiplication for some matrix A. Now as a specific example, let's look at this next problem. If T is the transformation from R2 to R2, so we're working within the plane, and this transformation is a reflection about the y-axis, find the matrix A that represents the transformation. Well, to find this matrix, this matrix is just the result of transforming the columns of the identity matrix. So the first column of A will be the transformation of E1, and the second column will be the transformation of E2, where E1 and E2 are just the columns of the 2 by 2 identity matrix. There's my 2 by 2 identity matrix. This first column is E1, second column is E2. All right, so this is the transformation. We just said that E1 is 1, 0, and E2 is 0, 1. So what happens when we, when we apply the transformation of these vectors, when we reflect these vectors about the y-axis? Well, when we reflect this vector about the y-axis, we get the vector negative 1, 0. And when we reflect this vector on the y-axis because it's on the y-axis, it stays the same. So this should be the matrix representation of this transformation. I should be able to take this matrix and multiply it by some vector, and the result will be flipping that vector over that axis. Let's look at an example. If I take negative 1, 0, 0, 1, and I multiply it by the vector 1, 2, the result when I do this multiplication is going to be negative 1 and 2 which of course is this vector just flipped over the axis. I can plot that if I just sketch it real quick. My input vector was 1, 2, and my output vector is negative 1, 2. So I've just done that reflection. Now I can see that here um, just by sketching the graph, but what I'd like to do is be able to plot that mathematic and really see that reflection. So let's take a look at a Mathematica notebook. All right, so now I'm going to do the calculations in Mathematica. Enter my matrix A. I'm going to define the positions by hitting Control, comma, Control, Enter until I get the right size matrix. Now I'll go to each individual spot and type in the values. Negative 1, 0, 0, and 1. And this should be the matrix. That's my reflection matrix. And I'm going to hit Shift, Enter to store that value into A. I'll also put a semicolon so I don't have to see the output. Now if I take A, and I multiply some vector, for instance, the vector 1, 2, the result is the vector negative 1, 2. So I can see that it has done um, the calculation that I wanted to. But now I want to visually see if I'm taking the point or the vector, 1, 2, and actually reflecting it with the y-axis. So what I'd like to do is plot my two points. I'm going to use the command list plot. List plot is a command I use for plotting points. And I want to plot two points. I would like to point my initial point. 1, 2. I'd also like to point the result of taking my point, 1, 2, and reflecting it about that axis or hitting it with that matrix multiplication. All right, so there I go. I've plotted these two points. I have my original point and I have the reflection. And if I want to play around and try it with another point, one little shortcut I could do is define something called point to be the point I want to change. Here, let's try a new point. Let's try 1, 3, for instance. And if I make that change, now I can just replace my point in the previous positions with the stored command point. This way, if I want to change my point again in the future, I won't have to retype it every time. So now I can evaluate that definition cell, and I can run my plot. And sure enough, once again, it looks like a reflection about that axis. Let's try a different transformation. The next tra transformation that you should have seen before is a contraction or dilation. So we're going to let t be the transformation that's defined by t of x equals r times x. So what we're really doing is scaling a vector. And of course, our first step is to once again see what that matrix representation is. Well, as before, we're going to transform the columns of the identity matrix to form the columns of A. 
like this. Well, if I multiply this vector by r, I would get the vector r0. If I multiply this vector by r, I get the vector 0r. And those should be the columns of a. So if I want to apply this transformation of scaling x by some value r, this is the matrix I would multiply it by. So if I wanted to double the length of a vector, I could multiply it by 2, 0, 0, 2. So now let's see if we can use this matrix in Mathematica to visualize this transformation. All right, so now we've changed our matrix to 2, 2. And we'll keep our point the same. And now we'll run our list plot. Now here I see that my first point, and it does seem like it's sort of stretched, but it's hard to see because the plot has been scaled. So if I want to fix the scale, I can add a command called plot range. And this plot range, and I'll hit the subtraction sign and the uh, greater than sign, and then when I hit a little space, it will turn into a nice fancy arrow for me. And so I can adjust the, the visual range that they're going to display in my plot. And so how do I enter my range now? I'm going to enter two ranges, a range of x values, comma, and a range of y values, both in the larger list. So in this case, I might want x to go from negative 10 to 10. And I want my y values to go from negative 10 to 10. There, now I can see that I have my original vector, and I really have scaled it to get this next vector. Now I could scale it farther by changing this value to 3, kind of see how that affects my plot. And sure enough, it's stretched a little bit farther. Now what I'd really like is to be able to see the different effects of changing that scalar r in my matrix, but be able to see it all at once. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to define this matrix, I'm going to define redefine the matrix to be the transformation, and I'm going to let it be a parameter of r. And I'm going to put r into these values instead. I'm going to rerun that. And now if I want to use this, I would type t, and I would put in whatever value of r I want, for instance, 2. And if I run that, it will give me the matrix I want. So this is my matrix 2, 0, 0, 2. And specifically, if I wanted to multiply this by my point vector again, Sure enough, that's doubling my, my point value, my vector value, 2, 6. And if I wanted to triple it, I would just change that value. And so if I wanted to change my list plot, now I could do the transformation where r is 3. And there's my plot. Now once again, to really see this nicely, I can add a new command called manipulate. Now I'd like to keep my plot here so I can continue to look at it. So I'm going to copy this line, go down a little bit farther, so here would be how I would do my plot. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap a new command called manipulate. Manipulate all around this other command. Manipulate allows me to change some piece of the command to a parameter. I'll let this be my parameter. I will call it t. And then at the end, I'll give a range of values for t. t might go from 1 to 4, for instance. And then when I execute this line, it's going to create a dynamic plot that will allow me to drag and change that value of t that I set as my parameter in the manipulate command. So now I can see, and I'll hit this little plus so we can actually see the values. My manipulate starts at t equals 1 and goes to t equals 4. And so I can see as I change that value what happens to that vector. When I multiply by this matrix, it's stretching that vector value. That would be a dilation. Now contraction is when that value in the matrix is smaller than 1 in magnitude. So let's see if we can include those values. So now I'm going to let t vary from 0 to 4. And so I can see that these smaller values, so if I start at 1, which should be right about here, if I'm multiplying by a value smaller than 1 in magnitude, there it goes. It's contracting down to the origin. But if I were to multiply by a number bigger than 1, it's dilating away from the origin. Now, one question you might have is, is why are we bothering with Mathematica in this case? I was able to do those hand calculations and see the effects of this matrix multiplication without using Mathematica. And so I could just multiply my matrix by each individual point and, and that would be fine. But one of the powerful things that Mathematica allows us to do is to apply this matrix multiplication to possibly several points all at once. And why would we want to do that? Well, consider the following. 
if I were to take an image, an image can really be considered as a large list of point values. So let's explore this a little farther. I'm going to use a command called current image. Current image is going to access my webcam on my computer and actually take a photo. So when I evaluate this cell, there is a picture of me with my headset and I'm making my recording. So this is my image. I'm going to store this image to the command pick. Of course, when I rerun this, it's going to take a, a new image. And so now I've stored this value into pick. I'm going to see if I can use the points in this picture and manipulate them using matrix multiplication. Now the first thing is these pictures, they are all locations, but they're also a color value associated with each position. And that can be a little challenging to work with. So to simplify this a little bit, I'm going to use a command called binarize. Binarize. Now what binarize does is it is going to turn my picture into a black and white photo. And so first I have to tell what photo I would like to binarize, and then I need to have it give a threshold based on the lightness of it at each point. If it's just light enough, it will turn it to white, and if it's too dark, it will turn it to black. And I'll set some sort of parameter between 0 and uh, 1 to choose what is white and what is black. So there's my binarized photo. Now the next command I'm going to use around binarize, now that it's um, turned each position into a black or white, is I can use a command called image value position. Image value position. Now what this is going to do is it's going to gather up all the points with specific values. I'm going to choose a value of 0. And what this is going to do, sorry, image value positions, it's going to pull out the points that are black. And it's going to give me a big list of all these points. Now, I don't necessarily want to see all these points, but I do want to store those points so that I can manipulate them with my transformation later. So I'm going to store all those big list of points to binarized points. That's going to be my shorthand name for it. I'm going to store those points to that. All right, I don't want to see all these points, so I'm going to add a semicolon after it. And there I've stored all those points to, to bind points, binarized points. Now, in fact, if I wanted to see those again, I could just list plot that giant collection of points, list plot point points, and sure enough, I would get my list plot. That's still kind of that same image. Now, since bind points is just a collection of points, one thing I can do to this is multiply each of those points by my matrix. My matrix T before represented that transformation where I was doing a dilation so it should be stretching on my images. And that's what I'm going to do here. There's a couple little weird things that are just for formatting. As I collect these points, I'm going to put all these points on its side. And so to make this multiplication actually work, I have to tip those points on its side. I do that with a little command called transpose. And then my final result will also be tipped on its side when I do this big multiplication of many points. So I also have to tip that on its side as well. But when all is said and done, I've done that multiplication. Now it really didn't look like I did any stretching. But the reason for that is because my scales were automatically adjusted. So to really see the effect, I should also put a plot range on this thing. So I'm going to add a plot range like I did before. We'll use x values that go from, and we'll just pick a big value here, negative 1,000 to 1,000, and same thing for my y values. All right. Now, once again, what happens is I change this value. I really am stretching or contracting all those points. And so if I want to put my parameter back in here and turn this picture into a manipulate, manipulate, where I let t go from, we'll say, 0 to 4. And then I can see how my image would change. And so just using this matrix multiplication, I can do a little image manipulation in Mathematica. Now, what your assignment is going to be is to do some of these same steps, but with a different matrix. Your assignment is going to be to define a matrix to be the rotation matrix, where I take some point or some vector and I rotate at some angle theta about the origin. Now you should have seen that matrix in your text or in class, and so you're going to replace this matrix by that rotation matrix, 
let the parameter be t, where that's the angle you're doing the rotating it. And then I want to see some point. I want to see that you multiplying your matrix by that point. Just choose some specific angle here, whether it's 60 degrees or whatever you want that angle to be. After that, do a plot of both the original point and your rotated point so that you can visually see that it makes sense. And lastly, create a manipulate that will let you drag that point and do that rotation. And that's all you have to do in the assignment. Don't worry about rotating the actual image. Just stop there. Once you've done all those steps, make sure you go to File, Save As, and save your assignment as a PDF, and then go ahead and upload it to the assignment page. All right, and that concludes this period of instruction on matrix transformation in Mathematica. Thank you.